at Oakwell, we're developing advanced nuclear reactor systems, and we've been focusing on a subset of those called microreactors. By us going smaller with our design and smaller sizes of these reactors, we're able to work with a range of customers beyond just utilities. We're able to work with community members, working with data centers, Bitcoin mining companies, hospitals, campuses, you name it. And one of the unique features that you'll learn in this presentation is that our power plants do not need to be refueled frequently. It can operate for decades without needing to refuel. So that's a huge thing that's that works really favorably for a lot of our customers. I thought it would be really helpful to go through the timeline and the major milestones that the company has achieved to date. So you see early on, we decided to really engage and work on the licensing activities with the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We knew that in order for us to be successful in the space, we needed to have a clear licensing pathway. We're really proud of the work that we've done to date with the US regulator. We're the first to, to submit a combined license application for an advanced reactor design. We introduce a new application structure and new methodologies and the license was accepted for review and docketed in 2022. There's more work to be done on that front, but we're excited and looking forward to working with the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission closely on what that looks like. And if you look at the other milestones here, you see that in 2019, we were granted a site use permit from the Department of Energy to site our first full-scale commercial unit at the Idaho National Lab. We were also awarded fuel to power our first reactor. And the fuel awarded to us, it would allow us to operate the first commercial scale power plant for its entire lifetime. So we have all the key pieces lined up working together really well to not only allow us to be successful in the space, but allow us to deploy in the near term at around 2025 timeframe. And so just earlier this year, we were awarded multiple competitive awards by the DOE to develop out ways to energy fuel recycling. So an amazing thing about our technology is that we're utilizing fast fission reactor technologies, which allow us to convert nuclear waste into clean energy. And so I'll talk more about that in my later slides. But the work that we're doing in fuel recycling, it's really critical because in order for us to make a difference on the climate and on the world, we need to commercialize and deploy a lot of these power plants. And in order for us to do so successfully, we need a secure and economical supply chain. And so while we can take fresh fuel as well, we can also take used fuel and convert them into clean energy. So we're really excited to continue to lead in this space and work with our partners like the US National Labs and DOE on fuel recycling capabilities. So let's talk about our products, the Oakville powerhouses. We're starting with a range of products that range from 1.5 megawatt electric to 15 megawatt electric. The fuel type that we use is metal fuel and the coolant that we use is sodium instead of water, which I think most of us may be used to seeing when looking at the current existing nuclear fleet. The capacity factor, our power plants can operate over 90% of the time, which is incredibly high. And that's thanks to the high energy density of nuclear power. It is such a great energy source that can provide reliable base load power 24-7. So when you compare nuclear power to other energy sources like wind and solar, which is more at about 35% or less, 90% is it's really incredible. And because our power plants do not need to be refueled frequently, um, it really gets us to closer to 100%. And in terms of licensed operating life, uh, we do not need to refuel very frequently, and therefore we would match our uh, license operating life accordingly. So if you're going for the 1.5 megawatt electric, we do not need to refuel that plant for about 20 years, and we would match the license operating life accordingly. And if you look at the 15 megawatt electric, 
you do not need to refuel that plant for about 10 years or more. And so again, matching the licensed operating lifetime accordingly. And for lead footprint, we do not require a lot of land at all. For the 1.5 megawatt electric, we need about a quarter of an acre of land. So think of a, a house. Um, and 15 megawatt electric, we don't need that much more. We need about a, um, an acre or less. And in terms of flexible power options, we can provide um, cogeneration and non-electric applications. So things such as industrial um, heating and usable heat. And in terms of water resources, we do not require water to cool our reactor, as I had mentioned previously. And that opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of where you can site our power plants. We're not limited to needing to site near a big pool of water for cooling because we don't require that. And so that opens up a lot of flexibility in terms of what, where you like our power plants to be. And so looking, looking at all of these unique features, you can almost in a way our customers can customize their power usage depending on your needs. So for instance, let's say you need our powerhouses to provide power to your community. You can have a few of our powerhouses distributed accordingly, and you may pull uh, electricity from one power plant and then pull usable heat from another, and then maybe pull both usable heat and electricity from another power plant. So being able to have this distributed power within your community to really build out your own grid resiliency is such a powerful thing. So let's say there is a power outage that's being impacted by the centralized main grid, you are now not impacted by that because you have developed out this energy security among your community. And that's such a powerful thing when you think about um, from a business perspective. You can continue to operate your business, continue to um, provide power to your community. And so we're really excited to provide that type of solution to our customers. So all of that may sound really great, but is the design mature enough and has the technology been demonstrated before? And the answer is yes. Oklo is building on the legacy of Experimental Breeder Reactor 2, also known as EBR2. It operated for decades, it operated for 30 years. And what was amazing about EBR2 was that not only was it able to demonstrate fuel recycling successfully, it produced power about 20 megawatt electric um, and it sold power affordably to the grid at, at about 3 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, it also demonstrated these amazing inherent safety characteristics that when the reactor was undergoing these full scale safety tests. It was able to still operate as expected. It was able to destabilize, self cool, and shut down without any intervention. It was also able to demonstrate these enhanced safety case because it is a non pressurized system. We're not required to have these complex and specialized big system to cool the reactor down. So while we increase reliability because of these amazing safety characteristics, we're also decreasing in cost. And so I'll talk more about that in this particular slide in terms of cost and operating benefits. And I'll start with this graph here to the right. Um, if you look at the entire life cycle material required per gigawatt per hour, nuclear power requires the least amount of material. So think about the entire lifetime, all the way from mining resources and uranium for fuel to material required to construct a reactor. Um, the entire life cycle, nuclear power by requires the least amount of material by far compared to all the energy sources available to us today. And so when you combine the amazing energy density of nuclear power to the cost benefits that I had just mentioned that come with the inherent safety characteristics and the fact that we're shrinking the design down to a smaller and simplified version, we're now requiring so much fewer parts and components. We require about a thousand times fewer parts 
And because of that, we can really drive the cost down significantly. And because the fact that our system is a non-pressurized system, it allows us to tap into the existing supply chain. We can tap into the conventional material that's already available to us because our systems are smaller, simpler with these amazing heat transfer capabilities that is done by natural forces. Instead of us developing these exotic components, we're able to just use the existing supply chain for a lot of our components, which is great in terms of the economics of building out our power plants. So let's talk about our business model. One of our business models that have worked really well domestically in the US with our US customers is our business model of owning and operating our power plants. As I mentioned in my introduction, by with us going smaller in the reactor size and design, it has opened up a lot of doors in terms of the customers that are interested in our solutions. But a lot of these customers may not have the experience operating a nuclear plant. And that's when this model comes in really favorably. For our customers that are only interested in buying our power, we can offer a power purchase agreement and customers would sign that. It would be our responsibility to ensure that we're offering cost competitive pricing and terms. And from then on, we would take care of the entire life cycle of the plant from licensing, construction, refueling, and decommissioning. So this is my final slide. In terms of timeline, um, in 2022, towards the end of this year, that we're expecting to submit our updated license application with uh, to the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission at the Idaho National Lab. And in 2022 to 23, that's when we're expecting to submit additional applications for additional units that we plan on deploying. And in 2024 and 25, that is when we expect to receive approval to build our first power plant at INL. And 2024 to 25, we expect to have construction to be completed and operation to begin. So that's my presentation. Thank you again for having me.